Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Fluent in Velocity in San Jose. I'm here with Amit. Amit, how you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. You're with Oracle. Yes, I am. So what are you guys doing to make life easier for the modern application developer? Now, we're doing quite a few things. I mean, over the last few years, we have been building out a whole cloud platform which allows developers to build any kind of application. So we cater to every kind of developer you can think of. One is anybody who's doing cloud-native development. So we have a set of services and capabilities for any cloud-native developer to build an application either on Java or run it on Node or Ruby, pro provide them a polyglot-based programming interface, mm -hmm. as well as provide them tooling to build those applications very easily. Uh, and then we have also capabilities for anybody who wants to lift and shift an application. So if you had built an application in ISV or any custom or bespoke application you had, you want to move it to the cloud, we provide you tooling for that, as well as be able to run those things without having to rewrite a lot of the code and redo the testing. And that's so, lift and shift? Lift and shift, if you want to call it, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's a, so that's, a, that's a, c c quite a few uh, customers we speak to nowadays who have a lot of application assets, and they want to leverage that and then build around them. So we'll allow you to take that workload and move it to the cloud, provide you the tooling for that, as well as be able to do extensions on it. While people are doing this lift and, and shift, was it lift and lift shift? Lift and shift, is yes. Yes. While they're doing that, are they, are they also looking at how do they make these uh, shifts or these lifts into microservices and how to containerize parts of this as well? Oh, no doubt. So as I said, the, the, clou the cloud native part is a similar idea where you would have the capability of doing uh, microservices based architecture, uh, have API based uh, design, and be able to deliver this on a much more modern platform. So when they're doing lift and shift, one thing they want to do is take the existing assets they had and the code business logic and move it first. And then they either redo some of the pieces of it and build microservices and build it in a much more modern way. Uh, as well as they want to do extensions which they write in a microservices environment. So now you can have a mixture of things available to you from the investments you have made as well as extensions you created. So then you can modernize and get the value very quickly. So are you seeing this as a, a general move or general, uh, I like the shift metaphor, as a digital transfer, a piece of their digital transformation. Are you seeing that with the customers you're working with? Oh yeah, yeah, no, I think it's a very, very common part of this strategy where they just don't want to do everything from scratch. So you do want to take advantage of the modern environments and modern technologies, but you also want to take values of the assets you have. So when they're doing the digital transformation and move to the cloud, they want to identify the workloads they want to keep and they, 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 want to, they want to leverage. And then they start doing a lot of the shifting, as you said, uh, and then building around it. And then you can have different kind of developers around it, right? So you can have a professional developer who wants to write code in Node or Ruby, or whatever it is, and build microservices. You could have a developer who's a much more visual-based, like more, we call it citizen developer or low-code developer, who wants to do much more visual design and really do extensions without having to write any code. But the platform underneath the cover still remains the same. So anybody can work on it, but I can provide you different interfaces and different capabilities at a different level to build on those uh, code bases. And do you allow them then to also build a more of a hybrid uh, solution as well? Like maybe they have some uh, sec secure uh, or compliant oh, yes, software yes. that they have to keep or running on, on yeah, premise. I mean or, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think that's a very part, a big part of our strategy is to, of course, have customers to choose where they want to deploy things. So a lot of customers might want to say, you know what, I'll do this particular service or this application running in the public cloud because I'm okay with the privacy laws or whatever may be the case, uh, or I just want to do test dev initially and then start doing my prototyping. But I might have a regulation requirements where I have to move the data and everything behind my firewall. So I provide you, as Oracle, we provide you the full same stack, the public cloud stack, which runs your microservices, runs your API, runs all your Kubernetes and Docker images, and let it run that behind the firewall of any data center you choose. So, and then whenever you choose to redeploy it in the cloud, you can do that without again having to rewrite the code or retest it, which is a big part of kind of the comfort a lot of customers find from us, where we provide you the full seamlessness between the two models and have a hybrid deployment topology where you can connect those things together as well. You might have a lot of existing on-premise applications as well you want to connect into the cloud-based systems you're building, and we provide you that capability as well. So Oracle is also a global com company, right? Yes. So you have customers pretty much across the globe. Yes. Are there any differences in those geographic areas of, of companies that are transitioning quicker or lifting and shifting more? Yes, no, we definitely see a lot of different uh, phases of uh, adoption and different mindsets as well. I think many countries, of course, have a lot of regulations uh, where the data residency becomes an important uh, aspect of how you deploy your application. So there we do have customers who say, you know, we love the public cloud, but we would definitely want a data center in our uh, country or you want to have something which is privately run behind our firewall. So especially a lot of, lot of countries in Europe, we see that. 
Uh, Asia is very similar as well in many places. I think network becomes an issue as well because you can't expect to have data centers in every country you can think of. And that's for that what we're seeing is that we have this deployment model called clouded customer where we take an extension of a public cloud. It runs the same way. It's the same subscription service. It's the same uh, patching model. We upgrade and maintain everything, but it runs wherever you choose to. So we come in and get it going, and then we run it all remotely and run it as part of public cloud. So it gets completely in sync with the public cloud offering we have. So we're seeing that government agencies very similar as well in different, different countries. And are there any industries that you see moving quicker than others? And, 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 and likewise, what are you guys doing to attract maybe the, the laggards? Sure. So now we see definitely the industries in terms of quick adoption. I think we're seeing a lot of interest from retail. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a huge need for them to get online and get a lot of the services running in cloud in a very agile way. Predicting what their customers want and what they might and buy. They or exactly, or and the, the yeah. capacity all the changes, the demand changes depending on the seasons and everything, so you don't want to do upfront commitment on the cost part. Yeah, yeah. So we're seeing a retail being one of the early, very quick mover in that area. We're seeing something similar with telcos, mm -hmm. and they always had affinity to technology anyway, and they'll know how to run data centers, but then now they want to kind of get the benefits of having a much bigger, broader public cloud services running in places they might want. Uh, very similarly, financial services, strangely enough, is starting to now take a lot of their workloads and start running it also in the public cloud. Uh, so that's another area. <laughs> Government agencies, very, very quickly, they want to reduce the cost and have a predictable uh, cost model. All government agencies? No, it's, it's mostly what we're seeing state and local state pretty and local. fast okay. because they have a lot more uh, little flexibility than the federal in, in the U.S. as well as in, in, even internationally we see in many countries. There's a lot more adoption towards that kind of a model. Right? And, the, and the, uh, if you look at uh, industries like, uh, I would say, manufacturing, Again, very heavy workload oriented, very costly in, uh, investment. So they're starting to quickly take up all this cloud in, uh, adoption, but they need to figure out how to amortize the existing investment they've made. So that's a little slower usually for them because they already have sunk in a lot of cost in the data centers. So that's the one we help out a lot with where we say, hey, you want the public cloud benefits, I'll let you run it in your data center, but you're getting to pick up the public cloud benefits and modern development environments, run uh, cloud native stuff, without having to do everything again from scratch. So Amit, if we sat down 12 months from now mm -hmm. and had this conversation next year at this time, at this event, what would you like to say Oracle is doing for developers differently at that time than you are today? Sure, I think the bigger, uh, what you'll see over the next 12 months, one is the ability to have all the tooling and the latest technologies all integrated into one platform. Right, as I said, we provide you the cloud native platform, we provide you the ability to do a lot of container-based application development, we provide you visual ways of building applications. Over the next 12 months, what you'll see is a lot of tooling and abstraction so that all of these things underneath the covers work seamlessly and you can pick and choose the technologies you want to use and deploy on and we'll provide you the full uh, capabilities there without having to make decisions up front any time. Some of these times, right? So, so hiding some of the complexity. And, uh, yeah, yeah, ease of use for sure. We're starting to do a lot of work around the unification of our user interfaces. Uh, we're making a lot of the tooling a lot of the developers like. So we just recently re announced announcement uh, a partnership with Docker, for example. Mm -hmm. a partnership with uh, doing things with Kubernetes. Uh, things we're doing with a lot of other open source technologies. Uh, so all of the services are now getting baked into our platform. Uh, and uh, we're doing a lot of work around Hadoop and Spark and Kafka. So a lot of the things are coming together now. So over the 12 months, this platform is going to be even be much more robust, much more easy to use, uh, and uh, I would say very, very comprehensive. Excellent. Well, we look forward to that conversation yeah. in 12 months. Me too. Thank All you. Right, thanks.